trail building, it's a bit of a dark art, but it can be really rewarding, you know what? Like building your own trails, seeing these things take shape. And luckily today, I'm joined by old Affa here, Dan Afferton, and uh, well, we're currently hiding in the sawmill up at Dovey Bike Park, because the weather's minging outside. But Aff, I think it's about time uh, we headed out. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's pretty noisy in here. I can't really hear myself think. I know, I'm having to <laughs> shout a little bit. Should we go see some of your creations? Yeah, man, let's do it. All right, well, let's head out there. So we've come up onto the tracks, onto this lovely bridge that you've built. And now you started the park back in about 2015. Yeah. And you've been digging trails for as long as I've known you, but what was the reason for sort of going straight in at the deep end like this? Well, I suppose it came from like, just years and years of building our own tracks to train on. But then, you know, it evolved so quick, it was, it was crazy. And before we knew it, it was like, we were open to the public and I was like, oh, how did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you've been riding here before the park was an official thing, wasn't it? Yeah, so the previous landowner was kind of uh, pretty open to letting us build stuff up here. Yeah. How do you take it from a place that you just ride uh, to turning it into a bike park? I think it was a natural kind of evolution from running events like Red Bull Hardline. You know, we, we had it in our mindset of how to deal with landowners and all our lives we'd kind of put races on, we'd run nationals, you know, right. built national tracks, helped, helped organizers do that. So. You know, it was it was the next step. Once you'd got the permission, well then, you, I mean, it's almost free reign. Cause I don't say you guys sort of lease or own the mountain, don't you? Yeah, we own the mountain now. Um, and that was, that was a decision just to make our lives easier, really. Uh, <laughs> if you, you can. Know, <laughs> dealing with landowners is a nightmare, like you say. Yeah. We were lucky enough to, to get HSBC on board. Um, they were, they've been a massive support through the whole thing. All right, Daniel, you've got your mountain, you've got your permissions in place, but it's track building time now. Do you start at the top, work your way down? Do you start <laughs> at the bottom, work your way up? Do you find a random feature and plan around that? How do you go about actually planning your tracks, building them if you like? Well, building a track for yourself to ride is so different to building a bike park. Okay. You know, with a bike park, there's so many things that you have to kind of link up in your head. So it wasn't just a case of building one track and then moving on to the next one. I tried to kind of imagine the network of trails that we yeah. wanted and for people to be able to ride the top of one, go into another one, okay. go into another one. Add to that the fact that you've got to choose the best features on the mountain to include. So say we're on we're on old Beef's Highway here, so you'll have like a, a top to bottom, like a start and a finish. Yeah but then you'll just scout the mountain out low to find the best way of getting from A to B? Yeah, I guess you you kind of just walk it loads and loads and loads. Yeah. And then you just identify like key points that you want to get to um, and then try and link them up. And inevitably some of those points will be impossible to, yeah. to include. So yeah, just try and get the most flowing line, but including the, the best kind of okay. terrain. Well, let's rewind like say 20 years <laughs> to uh, say our younger audience who aren't going to be building bike parks or have mountains, but they've got permission at their local spot and they're looking to build say like their first couple of trails there. How would you suggest going about that maybe? I think that flow is the most important thing, you know, try and right try and picture the flow and I always try and imagine th cool things that I've ridden in the past, say at a race or you know an event somewhere, yeah. and then try and replicate that with the build. So everything that I build, it always comes from inspiration from somewhere else. Nice. So like you've got, and it always comes from how you want the bike to feel and how you want to yeah. feel on the bike rather than like how it looks or like. Yeah, and you know, if, you've, if you haven't got the steepest mountain in the world, you can have some cool jumps on that, you know, yeah. because a steep mountain, the jumps get so big so quick because you get going so fast. Yeah, and yep, for sure. No one likes breaking in the middle of a jump line, so no. yeah, just flowing, work with it? your terrain, yeah. This is the biggest jump up here then, Af, roughly about 50 odd foot. How many tonnes of dirt to make this? 150. That's a lot of tonnes. Ish. Ish. So <laughs> how long did it take to build? Yeah, it was weeks of just swinging dirt, but was it? in hindsight, we should have got a bigger machine. All right, what's the longest track from start to finish up here? Probably jump lines about three and a half K. Is it? So yeah. What's the time on that? Um, I'm not sure if anyone's done like a full time run, but it's probably about 
eight or nine minutes. Whoa. Does 50 hits have 50 hits? Yeah, it's pretty close. We yeah. keep adding bits on, so, okay, so give like or take. 56 hits now. 50-ish Doesn't hits. roll off the tongue as good. For many of us then, sadly, having our own mountain to be able to have free range and build whatever we want just isn't feasible, unfortunately, as much as we all wish it was. But there are tons of things you can do to help get involved with maybe your local trails. There's a local trails scene or organization where you can get involved, like I said, and really start to help out and make a difference. Now, most legit trails will have some kind of organization or group that will help manage and maintain the land and the trails that they're on, much like my local here. Now, these guys and a lot of people out there will put on a official dig days which you're more than welcome to get in contact with and help and come along and volunteer with. In fact it's actually a great way of getting along almost exploring new trails and giving back to them as well as meeting new people that you can get out and shred with so that's a winner all round in my books. Now the power of social media is also a wonderful thing like I said many of these volunteer groups have social media pages and followings that you can get in touch with them on there or see what progress is being made or do you know what if you want to find someone you get in touch with them see if you can help out as well as go and ride there. It's not necessarily no dig no ride but it's always very rewarding to sort of give back and help out these people. Now I must stress that these organised dig days they're done in tandem with landowners and people who manage the land so in the UK it's the Forestry Commission a lot of the time. It may be some different organisation whichever country you're in but they do that to make things as safe as possible and as official as possible so that they have various planned days things like insurance come into play uh, and also what part of the tracks you're going to build so not everyone's just tearing off armed with shovels digging up willy-nilly. No one wants to be digging up willy-nilly. Right, finally, it's often unofficial trails that ruin it for most of us. Sadly, people like to deviate away from the norm, and I get that, it's fun sometimes, but building unofficial tracks in official areas can really get you in some hot water with, like I said, landowners or other user group in the area. So horse riders, walkers, shooters, you name it, it's not worth the hassle put all that effort and energy into making the existing trails as good as they can. It's well worth it in the long run. It's all well and good having a bit of land and permission to dig on it and, you know, turn up to these dig days, but you've got to know what you're doing, isn't it? <laughs> Why are you asking me then? <laughs> well, that, you know, you've got a bit of experience here and there. Um, and I think we should talk berms because, you know, you've got to link bits of trails up with berms. When you're building a, a berm like this, yep. <laughs> Um, you basically want to clean it, so clean all the kind of top layer off, anything that's not like good quality dirt, anything basically that's not going to hold together, so okay. like that top layer is not going to hold together. So, so essentially stuff that's going to get rid of it. down. Get rid of it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and I see obviously on this one we've got a few logs, and is that structural? I mean it's more like markers really, so the okay. lads know where to build, but um, yeah, we, we can skin the top layer off, and put it yep. as like support around the uh, in the shape that nice. you want to build, and then take the next layer off and put that on on the on the kind of top on that top layer, and yeah. then basically with each layer that you take off, it's kind of getting better and better dirt. Okay. So you need to you, you need to start quite far back, so that when by the time you've put all those layers on, you're kind of uh, into really the right position. And you know when you're building a turn like this, as soon as you're below ground level. Um, you know that the the turn and the the rut becomes really stable because it's kind of it's underneath ground level and it's so you're on solid dirt. Cool. Whereas when you're above ground level, you know I it's blow out. It's just going to yeah. blow out. You know. So. And then lastly, just quickly, I've noticed obviously we've got drainage ditch at the end, so obviously all the water's going to run down the track. Yeah, drainage is key. You know, you're going to get a lot of silt running down the trail because it's kind of the quickest way, yep. the way that where the bikes are going. So yeah, try and get rid of that. All right, Alf, as we start, we all like to get a little airborne and building jumps is a real fun thing and really rewarding when you do get those wheels off the ground. <coughs> but how do you start small and work your way up in construction-wise? Like how would you go about building a jump, I suppose? So kind of like, like, you, like we learn how to build a berm, right. we normally pull all the kind of top layer in and then just kind of go down in layers, you know, so the next layer you'd put some rock on or something a bit more solid okay and then cover it all with like a good layer of um kind of gravel or badger sand or whatever you want your top layer to be all right and then uh shaping wise obviously the steeper the takeoff the higher you're going to go so you need to i presume plan your style of jump for the bit of trail that you're on 
Um, yeah, so, you know, if you're building on a bit of a hill, you can kind of, you could maybe find a bit of a hill like this one with a longer landing than, than a takeoff. So you've got like a bit more room to kind of play with. So, you know, your takeoff doesn't really have to be that big to, to give you some good height. Yeah. You know, half a meter to a meter is, is enough to kind of get you going, but. Interesting. The longer the landing, the better, you know, it's a little bit safer with a longer yeah. landing. Essentially then, I guess you can build up to how much send yeah, you want to go. You can just go a bit deeper, a bit deeper. And, yeah. and then you can add a little bit on there, you know, make a little it a bit. little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> like double it. <laughs> so for most jumps in small bits of woodland, how would you blend that jump into sort of the, the ground then really? So I, I suppose the most important thing to think about is drainage, you know, because you want to be able to ride your jump all year round. Yep. So rather than digging a big hole that's going to fill with water, you want to kind of fade um, ground level back. And okay. you know, if you're digging dirt off a, off a big long area, you're going to get a lot more dirt than just digging a big hole. If you dig before the jump and after the jump, it gives you like free height because you're low in the ground level. So that's going to make the jump stand out more and gives you a lot more dirt to put on yeah. the jump. Okay, interesting. Cheers, bud. So that's a wrap from me and Afi. Uh, it's been really interesting, mate, to delve into sort of how the running of the park and the building goes and how you'd build certain features. But do you have any final words of wisdom for us? Uh, I think just start small and just try and, um, you know, build quality. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> just don't build rubbish. Put the time in, build something good. Put the effort in and you'll get it back. That's it then. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let us know in the comments if you've got any trail building tips. Happy riding and we'll catch you next time.